Welcome to the first lab of computer networks. In this lab, we will be covering the circuit programming and C language. Uh, before introducing you to the circuit programming, let me first introduce myself. My name is Salman and I'm a PhD student at Network Systems Lab. Our lab is located on 10th floor and the lab number is 1008. Uh, I am the lecture assistant of this course uh, and if I'll be teaching you all the labs. If you have any questions or concerns related to the lab, you can reach me through email or this Kakao Talk number. And uh, you can also discuss it with me in person uh, every Tuesday or Wednesday from 1 to 2. But before visiting me, please, you have to send me an, a message on email or Kakao. Uh, the title of this lab is TCP IP Circuit Programming in C. So I'm expecting that all of you have some background uh, in C language. Uh, this uh, course carries four credit hours and two, are, two credit hours are allocated to the coursework and two credit hours are assigned to the lab. So we will be having two hours of lab each week. Uh, the assessment is uh, organized as uh, the homework uh, will have 10% of marks and then the rest of the marks are given to the attendance which will be covering the lecture plus the lab, uh, lab session where you conduct the assignments or where you validate everything inside the lab. Okay, now let me start. Um, uh, with the introduction of circuit programming in C. Circuit programming is a way of connecting two nodes on a network to communicate with each other. Uh, here you can see an, an example. Um, here is a circuit that listens on a particular port at an IP while the other circuit reaches out to that one in the form of a connection. So this can be regarded as a server that forms the listener circuit while this one can be regarded as a client that reaches out the server. So in this example, uh, this server uh, listens on a particular port and this is a client. Uh, it wants to transfer the data from here to that port. So it will just transfer the data to that particular port and that data is transported as like this. So the concept is pretty clear now. Um, a simple understanding of a circuit is to pro is, uh, it provides the operating system within the devices. So basically it provides a high level of abstraction to the programmers which means an easy interface to the programmers and the programmers are basically not aware of the complicated underlying physical and software details of the networking. The definition is now very simple. It's building a program that receives and transmits data between two or more computers by means of a network. Five must know fundamental details of circuit programming and see. Uh, this must be very boring if I start dive directly into it and uh, because uh, there are very deep concepts uh, like what is circuit, what is binding, what is uh, listening and what is accept, what is connect. All those things at this stage will become more boring and very confusing. So uh, let me give you an uh, explanation through an analogy with a phone call. For instance, uh, one person wants to make a call to another person. What is the most important thing for, thing for that person? The first thing they need, the both of the dial and dialer subscriber, dial and dialer, they need to have a phone. So for instance, we have A and B, both wants to communicate with each other. So A should have a phone and B should also have a phone. All right. This is the most important thing for both of them. But just a phone, will it work? No, because just with a phone, without having any number or any uh, internet or any means of communication phone is worthless right so uh, both the phone should be registered with a number uh, so that uh, the one caller or one subscriber or one person can make a call to the other one 
A can make a call to the other one, they should have a number, right? Now, once a person have a number, uh, for instance, let's say B. B has the phone, phone with a number, so he will not, uh, he will consistently monitor his phone whether there is a call from someone or not. So each time he is looking, he might see check his phone for a call or for an incoming message, right? So he is listening to his phone every time. Now, for instance, uh, A wants to make a call to the phone B. So what he has to do? He has to dial his number, right? So this phone has to dial this number. And once this phone dial the number, then this B will see, uh, hear some ringing or some vibration from the phone. And once he l uh, listen to it or sees, sees this, that kind of activity happening to the phone, he will just receive, receive the call. And once he receives the call, the connection is established and both A and B can communicate with each other. They can talk, they can exchange information, right? So the network is formed now. Now, keeping this story in your mind, let's move to the actual concept of socket programming. And from this analogy, we will see what is the matching of this story with that story. What is a socket? Socket can be compared to a phone. So a phone you have, it is a socket. So we need a device to call someone or to accept their phone calls, right? So for that, we need a phone. To perform net network input output, the first thing a process must do is call the socket function to call a specific type of socket by specifying the type of communication protocol desired, protocol family, etc. So this is the, the, that is very important, a socket whenever you want to make a network input and output operation means like the data to come into the network or to your computer and when you want to send a data from your computer this thing should be happening right if you have a connection if you have a phone and you have cacao installed in it and you want to send a message to your friend then you should be able to send a message that message should be delivered to that person or if that person is sending you a message then the message should also be received on your phone so that is input and output from the network network outflow and network network inflow so to do that to initiate a socket you will need a header file i hope you all understand what a header file is and then uh, you have to initiate this uh, after the header file you, you have to initiate the socket with this kind of command so there can be um, different uh, the domain there there is a domain there is a type there is a protocol so there there can be different things uh, now coming uh, details coming into this thing but we will see it later on like for instance type can be streaming packets or it can be data datagram packets or it can be raw packet uh, raw sockets sorry uh, i'm confusing the sockets with the packets it can be stream sockets or data uh, datagram sockets or the raw sockets uh, so the, the, that is called uh, what type of socket you are using and then there can be different types of protocol. The protocol can be just sending and without knowing from the receiver whether the packet transmitted successfully or not. Or there can be some way like when you once you send the packet and the acknowledgement is uh, also necessary from the receiver so that we ensure the reliable transportation of data. So uh, it can be TCP, UDP, like that so that, that is called the protocol uh, you know, which is happening in the sockets uh, i hope you understood now the socket concept and now moving to the other one thing which is binding so once you have the phone you should have a number right you 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 should own a number too without a number your phone is useless so uh, is it is like registering a phone number to your to the phone um socket do not have a complete address in the beginning to start transferring data so we need to bind a socket port 
Uh, but please remember the socket is the combination of IP address and the um, port. Uh, the IP address identifies the device, for example, a computer or a tablet or a, your mobile. However, an, an IP address alone is not sufficient for running network applications such as a computer can run multiple applications or services. Just as the IP address identifies the computer, the network port identifies the applications or services running on that computer. The system call binds a socket to an address, in this case the address of the current host and the port number on which the server will run. It takes three arguments. The first one is the socket file descriptor and this one is the address to which it is bound and the last one this one is the size of the address to which it is bound so the address is bounded to the socket and that's that is called binding now now you have a socket with a port a port information or with the address information now once you have a port and once you have a binding to that one now you can listen uh for anything coming to it so basically these three things are mostly rela are related to the server uh server listen to any incoming uh activity uh, or any incoming thing happening to a port and if it senses any kind of data coming on it it will just receive it so listening is consistently monitoring that particular port or that particular bound so uh, it's uh, identifying a bound uh, unconnected sockets means identifying the connection request so if there is a connection request established uh, it will just take it process of converting an unconnected socket into a pcf socket indicating that the kernel should accept incoming connection request directly to this socket so um, as i mentioned earlier uh, there is uh, the socket uh, and the socket is bounded with a particular port and then the server is consistently listening on that port so if any request or any connection is coming from the other client the server will just establish the connection with that one accept a connection request so anytime when the uh, when a server is listening to a particular socket and there is a request coming from a client it can accept that request and that is called the transition of a connection from a listening mode to an actual socket before it was just listening but once it's, it saw that there is some data coming out then there, there is some request coming for com, com, communication then it will make it actual socket actual socket mean the connection will be completed after accepting this uh, the, the request uh, an automatic creation of a socket uh, the data can be finally transferred between the nodes once a socket is connected as i showed you in the previous picture once the, there is a connection established then they can talk they can communicate and then the data transfer transmission can happen between the two nodes or more than two nodes so we saw four things happening in a sequence firstly the socket was created once the socket was created then it was bonded with the uh, ip address and also with a port number ip address identifies the uh, address of the computer and the port address identifies the application running in the computers right so uh, port is basically differentiating between different processes inside the computer and the whole computer picture address is the IP address and then the third step was uh, sorry there is some mistake it's it's like step number three um, let me correct it this is sorry for this mistake now so once the uh, IP address and then the port address was defined for the socket. Uh, it was okay for listening. Uh, it is now it can now hear from the external 
uh, clients and if any client is sending a request it can be sensed by this server and then uh, when this there is a request approach from any client it is accepted from uh, it is accepted by the server and finally a connection is established now uh, the connection attempting to establish a connection it's like dialing to a specific phone number when a, once everything is done by the uh, the server server is ready to accept anything any any request coming on at particular port now the connection means that uh, any client can send data at that particular port and they can make a connection so the, here here is the uh, socket.h again the header file and then connect connect which means that the server address where the destination address and then the server address length so the address length of the server and the address from there they, they can um, make a connection and to make a connection request just specify the address out to connect to and the socket descriptor to uh, attach the the socket to i hope uh, everything is clear uh, till this point uh, so mm, let me go go briefly through it again first you need a socket okay and the socket is has to be bound with a port and once the port is bonded with a circuit, socket then uh, the, the, the particular port can be listened and once the particular port can be listened any request coming from there can be accepted and once the connection coming from any person can be accepted means that it's ready to be connected to any client in the network so the clients who wants to attach to that server they will just make a connection request and the server will accept it okay uh, i'll now give you some uh, brief uh, brief uh, information related to compiler installation and compiling and running the code in c so for that um, i'll do it in two ways uh, you might have either macbook or you might have the uh, linux so if you have the macbook and linux the, it's pretty sim similar so um, the procedure is quite similar but if you have the windows based computer then you have to do some additional things that i have to explain you now uh okay so uh i i have attached some files to the lab uh on your blackboard and you have to download those files and once you download the the, the files then you have to go through all these steps i will just explain you in a while and after doing that uh, you will see that this connection from the server to the client will be established how to install the gcc compiler first of all from the lab material you have to come download the compressed uh, the compressed zip file so that you have to unzip and once you unzip it there will be a couple of uh, lab sessions you have to perform you have to practice and then uh, set the binary folder containing gcc file okay i'll i'll show you how to install the gcc for your windows for mac and for linux it is very simple so you don't have to do it and then you you will also need some uh, code editors so it's up to you uh, i will show i will suggest you a couple of them but uh, if you have your own that's fine that is not a necessary thing it's like not necessarily to do exactly what i am suggesting you okay so let's before doing before going further um, let's go and install the uh, compiler First of all, you have to open your browser and then if you have Windows computer. If you don't have Windows computer, if you have Ubuntu, then it's very easy. But if you have Windows, then you have to follow these steps. 
okay so i have google already there and here i will type cw uh, cyg win you have to download this one so basically uh, gcc g++ they are not provided by default uh, by your win by the windows and these are some linux operations so you have to download this this one uh, cyg uh, win and that's why it's written that get that linux feeling on windows so you can get the linux feelings on your windows and you for that you have to download this one the setup x86 uh, underscore 64 xz i already clicked it but it takes some time and once it is installed you have to click this one yes and it's pretty simple you just have to go next next and until it asks for something go next and uh, these are the mirrors from which uh, downloads can be available so you just click on the first one option and let it download now you have uh, all these things so first of all you need the gcc okay and then you have to further open it and this one you will need the gcc g++ so you have to choose this one and then you also need to choose this one that's it yeah you need the gcc core and you need the gcc dash g++ and then you just proceed with the next then again next and it will take a while uh, it might take some couple of minutes and once it is completed then we will continue with the rest of the process uh, okay well this is being going on I will also suggest you to download some editor for example uh, notepad plus plus this is also one of the editor I can suggest you for windows uh, it doesn't work for I guess for uh, Ubuntu the uh, Linux or Macbook it's only for Windows so you can download either this one or you can go for any other option like uh, I forgot the name this one uh, it was sublim sublim line or anyways yeah uh, sublime sublime text so you can also use that one okay just uh, take any of this one and then download it uh, oh sorry it's uh, 32 bits so we have to get the 64 bits version maybe by scrolling it down yeah here it is Installer. So the other one is still going on. Uh, we don't have to waste the time, and I'll te teach you how to download this one. So I hope you already know this how to download it, and you might have it already. Okay, I'll choose this one. Okay next and next again i agree next next and let's take it no full yeah let's take everything let's take everything and let me create also a shortcut on the desktop and let it finish So two setups are going on and the CPU is also making some noise. Uh, I hope that there will not be any distortion in my audio now. Okay, so this uh, Notepad++ is installed. Are installed and this one is still going on so i was expecting it would it wouldn't take that much of time 
but it took it okay so this is your notepad plus plus so let's wait for it for a couple of more minutes and once it is done then we will proceed with the uh, some tests okay uh, while that is being installed I'll just explain you how to compile this uh, uh, the files that I have already uploaded to the blackboard so you first have to download those files and there you will find for instance two uh, two things one is the server and the other is the client so the hello server uh, if you want to execute this one you have to type the GCC the compiler and then the file name dot c and then you want to make the object file of that and then you have to give it any number any name from any uh, name for example h server b server your name or anything uh, that will make a, a file an executable file and when you want to run that h server which is created by this gcc compiler and you have to put a dot backslash and then again the data name and that that will execute so what will happen what are you expecting from the server the server will keep will start keep listening at that port which you specify there and it will just keep listening then you will go to the client and then you will also execute the client first uh, first you have to compile the client and exactly the same way Mm, this one for instance the you you did uh, gcc hello server dot c then you created the object file and you call it h server and then once your h server is created you are just saying that let's say this is the port number 9190 now the server will now start listening at this particular port so any request or anything coming from this port the server will be alerted and then it will take the accept the connection from there now the same way you have to do gcc hello client.c so there is another file for the client and then again you have to create that o file o, 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 o file from that one and you will name it h client or anything so this is not necessary i can call it client or i can call it client abc so the same thing you can do and then you have to just do the same thing once the executable file is there dot sl dot slash and then again that name and this is the local uh, computer address so uh, since I'm using the same computer the same address so I don't have to use the far away address for instance if uh, it was some other computer or some different computer from my this one then I would have used that computer address the IP address it could be anything like 192.168.3.4 or 3.10 or 5.6 or whatever it was and then I, I would have given the port address which is defined already here now the server was listening here on port number 9190 and as you execute this one it will send a request to the server and since the server is listening it will just accept it and then you will hear the hello world from the server so th this is what we are expecting from our programs now so let's see the progress uh, sorry let's see the progress okay I want to create a desktop icon and I think we are good to go let's go close everything I hope it is putting a lot of burden on our processor okay now uh sorry uh, i was a bit hurry i shouldn't have opened it before uh first of all we should see where this cw cygwin is installed so you will go to your this computer and then you will go to the c drive and there you will find this one and then you have to go to the home and 
since I opened it, you might not see it before, but now since I open it, so once you open it, it will by default make a username. In my case, it's just created Muhammad Salman because it's my computer name. Uh, I think you can see it from here somewhere. Okay. Uh, anyways, I don't know. Yeah, here. You can see this is my user. Um, uh, the computer username that's why it is using this with the same name so for your case it can be different it can be anything with whatever you have given to your computer so it will make a folder you have to go to that folder so from local to its home then your folder then your name the you, your computer name and here you have to copy some files uh, I think I have already the files here source code yeah so uh, I'll just copy all of these files to this one all right now let's go to this one and I'll just click on ls and if I see pwd it will tells me that I'm in the inside this directory I'm in the home and then Muhammad Salman so it's like this one it is in home and then here so you anyway you have to come here but if you you are using Ubuntu or are you are using any Linux operating system for instance here I'm using Mac then in that case uh, you have to do something like this uh, this is located and downloads right the source code is located in downloads so you have to go to the D O W N L O A D S and from there you have to go to the source code and then you will yeah here you go you are here so you now you can execute that that, that command that we saw earlier and you will type gcc space h e double l o underscore uh, server first let's say server dot c minus object file and let's say mine is s-e-r-v-e-r -E i'm not writing h server so for for example i'm writing only server i will press enter and once i press enter i should see something like server uh, okay so let me open this one see this one is the server and for the same thing uh, if i want to execute the server backslash s-e-r-v-e-r and then i will define a port for that for instance i it's it can be anything it can be one two three four so this is now 8080 port i defined for it and now, now the server is listening on this particular port now again i have to go to the downloads and after the downloads, i have to go to the source code and then within the source code i have to execute the gcc uh, hello underscore c l i e n t dot c minus o and then c l i e n t so this is a client and now you can see here again the client is created and if i have to uh, uh, call the server if i have to do that then i have to take the client and since it's the same computer I'm not using the different computer so I will do one two seven dot o dot zero dot zero dot one space what was the uh, the port there eight zero eight zero but if it was different computer I would have used the different computer address right so please bear it in mind and see what we hear from the server the server already responded with the hello world so you have to open this code and you have to see what's there right so please explore this code and try to understand what is there oh sorry server i will open it with this one right and sorry i should have opened all of them So here we have the server right and the server is the message from the server is this one 
so once the client send a request from here it will uh, the, the server will respond with this message and this message is sent back to the client so uh, you have to go through the code and i hope it's not that difficult for you okay now let's go to the windows let's see how it works in the windows um, since I told you first of all uh, you have to copy these things to this folder to make the life easier for you and after that uh, you have to again write the same thing GCC uh, space hello underscore sorry server minus O space uh, it's server for instance or just server so once you run this command you should see a server executable file here and then you should do the same thing but with different one because we need a client also uh, but yeah first we have to define dot slash server it's server sorry it was it's server dot x z is not required and the port number for example it is 9191 and allow access yes i want to allow it access now it is listening see it is now just the cursor is blinking if you are able to see it and here is the client space uh oh sorry 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 because i have to uh, execute the gcc and then uh, H E double L O client underscore C L I E N T and then minus O and then I have to write the client or H client. Let's make it consistent. Now the client is also here and then now I will just write down dot slash C L I E N T and then one two seven again dot zero dot zero dot one space and what is the port number 9191 okay oh what's wrong here oh sorry it was h client it was not only client it was h client yes it should work see so you you saw that the the server uh, listening also finished once we uh, just uh, call that port 9191 which the server was listening the connection was established and the server responded to the client with the hello world that's it so now the next section is opening closing and writing into files so we will do couple of experiments here and we will see how these things works uh, I'll also explain you briefly about the code and how the opening, closing and writing into the files works. So in Linux, whether it is a file or input or output or the socket operation, uh, uh, both the files and sockets are treated as, as like a file. In other words, they are assumed as a stream. So sometimes Mm, if the file is read it is assumed as an output operation or if the file is uh, written it is assumed as an input operation so uh, when a file is read or written uh, there is a specific uh, distinct number assigned to it and that is called file descriptor for uh, for instance if the first one standard input is zero and then some other operation is standard output it is assigned as one and then there is standard error it is three then something else is happening with the port it will be assigned as file descriptor four and then five and so on and so forth so what a file descriptor is in fact when the operating system files are created it is assigned with some numbers uh, and this is for the sake of simplicity it's just to uh, be able to easily distinguish them as we know that file in this uh, socket both are input output streams so they are treated as a file and although the socket is more advanced it's more complicated than the uh, 
file but still uh, the features are similar and that's why the socket descriptor can be simply used as a file descriptor as well file open and file close are two important operations that must be done with the streams once you open the file it is very important to close the file otherwise you, uh, it will make an error for you or whatever the changes you are making to the file it will not be saved until and unless you are close it, you close it mm, here you can see um, uh, you have two input arguments for the open oh, the one is the path one is the file path and the, the other one is the flag so these are the couple of flags and uh, they define each flag has a certain operation for instance if you want to create a file you just write the first one to create the file from the scratch or if there is a pre-existing file and there is already some text written on it and you just write the truncate truncate the file truncate the file means that whatever the data was there before it will be overwritten with some new data that you will give it here so the previous data is erased and a new data is overwritten append mean the previous data is maintained and the new data is further written over it uh, after that uh, the it's not over it the previous data will still remain and the new data will uh, just append to that file then read only just read the file you cannot do anything with that file or write only you can only write to the files you cannot do anything with uh, else with the file or read write operation so anything you want to do with the file you can just change the flag and that will happen with this you know, open uh, open file but once you open the file you can see that there is i it is uh, int which returns the and the, this file will return the file descriptor which I just explained you here and this will gives you the file ID the file ID has to be closed uh, once you are done with any operation that is in the body of this program with in the body of this open program and once you are done with that then you have to close the that FID uh, with that specific FID that you had opened and that file will be closed this function takes three parameters the fun the first one is the file descriptor and the next one is the data that we want to uh, uh, the next one is the data that we want to write into the file and the last one is the size of the data that we want to the write into the file using this FID uh, let's see uh, how this program works uh, I hope it's visible to all of you uh, so the we are starting from the descriptor and then we are putting this value let's go into the buffer and then we are opening the file data.txt and then we are saying that create this file and this file should be only written a writing file and if there is any pre-existing data just erase the pre-existing data and overwrite the new data which is let's go uh, it will check whether the, uh, the file descriptor is minus one which means mm -hmm. that uh, this file does exist in the same folder or not if it doesn't exist then it will give us an error if it exists then it will give us the ID file description ID of that uh, particular file and once the, 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 the this is done once it find that the, there is, is a data.txt then it will just write down the buffer the the the, the size and the, the whatever it is in the buffer uh, into the file descriptor file which is already found here and uh, which means ultimately means that the let's go data is written into this file which has already been opened and after this operation uh, uh, if you know, once this operation is finished we have to close this file again and then we have to return zero which means that that's done and then it's closed and once it is written then we have to find we have to close this file
uh, it would be better if we see this operation practically so let's see uh, and check how this uh, operation is happening so before we would like to see the text the text data the existing code here is the, there is this is the existing code of the text and let's see uh, the file name is low open dot C mm -hmm. yeah it is low open dot C so let's run that command GCC low underscore open dot c minus o and then f i l e for instance i am calling it just file and the file is there and now i am writing dot slash f i l e and i'm waiting for the file it should give me the file descriptor 3 and okay it gives me the file descriptor 3 and then I'm going to see what is there inside the data.txt and it is let's go see before I showed you there was some other text but now it has been changed and the same thing and now it has been changed so it means that the data is written uh, uh, it is the same as the previous one so uh, but uh, here we, we are opening the file with only read only option so we cannot perform any other operation we cannot write here and then we will only print of whatever the data is there and once we are reached to the f till the end of the file we, we will close this file and then we will finish the program so let's see how this thing, this one programs works so again um, we will go to the same one but instead of low open we will say that it is low read r e a y oops i shouldn't have saved it in the file i should write in the r e a d okay now dot slash r e a d again it's let's go uh, now here I'll advise you to make some changes by yourself uh, for, for example you should change the data.txt from the let's go there should be something like let's go you just erase it and write down something and then save it and then check it the same way I showed you and see if you can see the next text that you wrote there and then also you please verify this one uh, here we have three file IDs. So the first one is um, file descri the first file descriptor is used as opening a socket, and the second one is opening a file, uh, which is creating it from the scratch. And this is a test data, and then read only, and then truncate. And the third one is again the socket, and then you the, there is three. Uh, it is reading the file id1 then file id2 and file id3 and finally they all the file ids are closed so um, just check this one and verify the results with this on this one and thank you so much this is the end of this uh, lab and i'll see you in the next lab